giving season, let us not remember, let us remember how awesome and how faithful and how giving our God is to us. And this is the time in the service where we can show God how grateful and how thankful we are for the blessings that he has bestowed upon us. Waking us up this morning, the jobs we have, being healthy, and just being in his presence this morning. Let us show him how thankful we are. Um, the ways we can give, um, you can um, donate, give to uh, on our church website. Um, you can send it to our PO box, or you can drop it in, off at the church in our drop box. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we just pray and just thank you um, for everything you are, for everything you have done, Lord. Just pray and thank you for this time of the service where we can be a blessing unto you, Heavenly Father God, to your kingdom, Lord. Um, we just pray um, for the hearts that are, are, are giving this morning, Lord, for the hearts that desire to give but can't, God. We just pray that the things that will be given unto you, Lord, that we'll use it to not only bless this house, but to bless your kingdom and your world, Heavenly Father God. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you. And it's in your mighty master, Son Jesus, that we pray. We give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, and we give you all the praise. Amen. Amen.
is an awesome God. He rules and reigns from heaven above. God, you are awesome not only because you reign, you, God, are awesome. Because you rule, you're awesome. Because you sustain, you're awesome. Because you provide, you're awesome. Because you nourish us through your word. And so God, as we bask in your presence, as we worship you in spirit and in truth, as we reverence and also fear you as an awesome God. God, we come to this point after we have offered our verbal praise, after uh, we have tangibly given uh, of our resources. God, after we uh, have called upon you in prayer. Now, God, we pray that you rest our souls and our spirits, uh, make ready our, our minds, our hearts, uh, and even our will to, to hear an awesome word that can only come from you. Father, we thank you that you allow us to be in your physical presence, but also in your virtual presence. We pray, God, that you bless the hearer no matter where they may be, that the word that is shared on today might be a blessing to someone's life. We pray, God, that the preaching of your word would convict the sinner, draw and summons them out of darkness into the marvelous light. We pray, God, your word would meet the believer in whatever season or scenario of life they may be in. That it would offer encouragement, that it would offer strength, that it would help them to endure. So Father, we thank you. We offer you our glory, honor, and praise. It's in Jesus' wonderful, mighty, majestic, and matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, good morning, uh, saints of God, to those who are here in person and those certainly who are viewing. Uh, it's not very often that the Lord uh, asks me to revisit uh, something that has already been said. Uh, but the Word of God says uh, in 2 Timothy, I believe, the fourth chapter, Paul. Uh, instructing Timothy says that if you keep the brethren in remembrance of these things, uh, you'll be a good minister of Jesus Christ. But I believe that things that have already been said, uh, God can say it in a new way, uh, in a new season, in a new time. So I'm going to invite you, those who are here with us in person, and those uh, who are viewing virtually, to join me in the Gospel of St. Matthew, uh, the seventh chapter. Gospel of St. Matthew, the Gospel as recorded uh, by the Apostle Matthew, the seventh chapter. And I'll begin reading with verse 24 and read through verse 27. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Rain descended, floods came, the winds blew, beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded upon the rock. And everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish person, build his house on the sand. The rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell. And great was its fall. The word of God is already blessed. Amen. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall remain forever. My friends, I want to talk about building with a storm in mind. I want to talk about building with a storm in mind. Uh, and through this message, I, I just simply want to share uh, some bullet points or some flash points for storm survival. Yeah. I want to share some survival strategies for storms. Uh, 
and the reason I want to revisit this is because we find that 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 storms never become extinct. Amen. That they are never come a time. Not not until we are ultimately in the presence of the Lord after being glorified shall uh, we not experience storms. Uh, I believe someone said that when we get there, that is when the weak, wicked shall cease from trouble uh, and the weary shall uh, be at rest. I believe Job says that, that when we are born of a woman, he says that our days are full of trouble. And so I want you to know something. Storms uh, do not have uh, an expiration date while we are living in this land. You uh, will not have a storm-free existence until you are no longer in this earthly existence. Uh, so while you are here, it, it will behoove us uh, to, to have uh, some strategies for those days that are stormy, uh, it would be mindful, it would be wise of you and I uh, to actually build our life yes. with a storm in mind. It's not very rational uh, to build your life or uh, to undergird your life with the idea or uh, the erroneous assumption uh, that you'll never experience turbulence or storms in your life. In fact, uh, uh, I know that storms can somehow appear uh, on the horizon of our life, but guess what? A storm should never catch you off guard. Uh, because the Bible over and over again says, yes, we may not know when, but we do know a storm is going to come. Uh, Jesus said in John uh, 16, and I believe uh, there uh, about verse 33, he says, in this world, uh, you will have and suffer tribulation. Be of good cheer. I've already overcome the world. Listen, all of us have seen what storms can do to coastal communities. Uh, anyone that, uh, that has lived uh, in, in the state of Florida, Florida on uh, the East Coast or maybe uh, live in one of the Gulf Coast states, you know firsthand what a storm can do to a coastal community. Uh, you see uh, the destruction. Guess what? It's quite uh, one thing to see it in pictures. It's quite another thing, my friends, to witness firsthand what storms can do. Uh, and one of the roles of, uh, of FEMA, one of the roles of FEMA whenever uh, there is a storm, FEMA uh, has a responsibility and even the Agricultural Department and other uh, government entities have a responsibility uh, to go in and survey the damage. And, and when they go in and they survey the damage, they are not only making an assessment of the physical destruction, that they, they are making an assessment of, of a damage that you cannot see. Uh, while many of us are, are fixated on uh, the physical damage, the, uh, the homes and uh, businesses and uh, the damage we can see with the human eye, FEMA and the Agricultural Department and other government entities, they are, are more focused on damage you cannot see. They want to make an assessment of damages in the infrastructure, of damage in areas of compromise, in places that you cannot see. Because if you do not undergird the areas that have been compromised that you cannot see, it does not make any sense to rebuild on a compromised foundation. So, 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 so Jesus is saying here, listen, I know that the floods are going to come. The winds are going to blow. The rains are going to descend. Everybody's house is going to get destroyed. But the issue is there are some invisible 
invisible pieces that really get exposed whenever storms come. And so when we talk about building up with a storm in mind, we're not talking about the aesthetics of a house. We're talking about the foundation of a house. Listen, my brothers and sisters, why is it that, that when storms hit the Gulf Coast like Hurricane Ida, you can find right in the same housing development one house completely destroyed, another house still standing. Why is it uh, that, that some homes are totally damaged and others only slightly damaged? Does it have something to do maybe with uh, the building materials? Maybe uh, it has something to do uh, with something else. That is, uh, when you look at these properties, uh, all of them are multi-million dollar homes. But yet some are standing and others are destroyed. The difference, my friends, is what they are built upon. And so when you assess the damage, and before you rebuild, uh, you want to focus on those areas that you cannot see. In this Sermon on the Mount, Jesus stresses uh, some very vital principles, and now he is applying the principles that he has stressed. The Sermon on the Mount, which begins with chapter 5, moves through chapter 6, and then concludes in chapter 7. Jesus concludes the Sermon on the Mount by giving some striking contrast and comparison. In fact, he gives three pairs of contrast. He talks about two gates or two ways. He talks about two trees, and he talks about two houses. And he helps us see the distinctions by drawing comparisons. In fact, in Matthew 7, 24 through 27, uh, Jesus is speaking well in advance of what James says, that we are not only to be hearers of the word, but we are to be doers of the word. Uh, and the difference that we find, my brothers and sisters, in this parable is that one uh, is not only a hearer, but a doer. They, they are both hearers of the word. They, they both hear the same instruction. Uh, the distinguishing mark is one hears and does, the other one hears and does what they want to do. And, and I'm parking on somebody's block right now. Because a lot of us, we hear, but we don't do. Uh, and then when stuff starts crumbling all around, this is the Lord said, uh, storms are going to come. But, but how did you build? Did you build with a storm in mind? Did you build as if nothing was ever going to happen in your life? So first of all, I want to look at similarities. Similarities between the two builders and the two houses. Now, now notice, uh, uh, the builders uh, both had the same desire. Both had a desire to build a house. In fact, if you back up uh, in the Sermon on the Mount in chapter 6, uh, verses 32 and 33, Jesus said, listen, uh, to, to, to the believer, uh, listen, you have the same desires as the Gentiles. You have a desire to have food. Have a desire to have your needs met. Uh, the difference is not the desire, it's how you have your desires met. Uh, Jesus said, uh, they seek first their desires, but you, my friend, need to seek first the kingdom. And if you seek first the kingdom, then your desires will be met. So notice, uh, they both have the same desires build a house. But then notice this. They also had a desire to uh, build a house in the same locality. They built a house in the same housing development. Right next door to one another. 
and they wanted to have seafront property. Both of them. Right? That's an expensive land. Both wanted to build a house. Both wanted to build a house in the same place. And both wanted the house to be close to the water. This is pointed out by the fact that the two houses were both subject to the same storm. Both subject to the same test, same stresses, and same conditions. Not only that, they both liked and designed the same house. Right. <laughs> the text does not say that one was in a mansion and the other in a shack. Come on now. They both designed the exact same house. But why is it that one stood and the other failed? Listen, it can be deduced from the facts that there's no difference in the houses. When you look at some of these residential developments that go up now, all of the houses, Come on now. listen, they look exactly the same. Uh, in fact, uh, the contract uh, is not often given to an individual contractor to build a house, uh, but it's given to a developer uh, to develop, right, the whole area. So they're all the same. And these uh, tractor houses, they are built by the same developers. The homes are, are only slightly different because they are built according to the same basic plan. But notice, you cannot see what's inside each house or underneath each house. Because what's inside and underneath may be very different. Amen. And my friend, storms test what is hidden from view. Amen. We, we can look holy on the outside. We can look strong on the inside. Uh, we can talk about how much we love the Lord and how much we trust the Lord with our mouth, but when the storm comes, uh, it, it reveals some compromised areas uh, that you cannot see. So, so, so we notice some similarities, right, between the two houses and the two buildings. Then secondly, we notice, first of all, some differences between the two buildings. Uh, the architect gave specifications to both buildings. One paid attention to what the architect said. Come on now. The other listened and said, I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. And we might as well admit, a whole lot of us, uh, we try to build our own life. We try to do our own thing. We try to do it our own way. Uh, and then when it don't stand up, we want to come blame God. Amen. But God is saying, I gave you plans yes, for how to be. Yes, now, the wise, in contrast, wants to erect a durable house so they consulted somebody who knows. And when they consulted somebody who knew, they both heard and they listened. Amen. One, listen, dug deep. The other one didn't dig at all. Uh, in fact, they didn't have the patience to deal. Yeah. So they just put up a, a concrete slab. Right. Yeah. And that's what a whole lot of us do when it comes to our spiritual life. Yeah. Uh, we don't have the patience to dig into the Word. Yeah. Uh, we don't have the patience to dig uh, into our spiritual life. So yeah. we put up a spiritual slab. Yes, and, and so we're only surface deep yes. when it comes to spiritual maturity. Yes. I know we can quote and talk the word, yeah. but we've only got a surface slab foundation. <laughs> but, but the other man said, I don't want surface yeah. slab foundation. Yeah. Uh, he kept digging and digging and digging and digging until he hit something hard. Yeah. And when he hit something hard and stable, he said, I, I ain't going to dig no more. I'm going to start building up. The other man laid a surface slab. 
and said, I'm going to start building something beautiful. Come on now. Because the reason why I'm so impatient is I'm more fixated on the aesthetics of the house yes. than on the infrastructure yes. of the house. Yes. So I want to hurry and lay a foundation and just start building. Yes. The other man said, it don't matter how beautiful it is. Yes. If I don't dig until I hit something solid and then start building up, what I build up that's beautiful is not going to withstand the storm. So my friends, you got to dig until you get to the point you can't dig no more and then start building up. Then thirdly, we notice the differences between the two houses. And there are two matters that I want to call to our attention when it comes to the distinction between the two houses. First one is this. The houses are already built. Text says the houses were not in the process of being built. They were already built. Because they were already built, the time for examination has already passed. When the house is built, it is too late to wonder whether or not it's going to withstand the storm. Too many of us, yes. when the rains descend, the winds blow, and the floods rise, we want to do an assessment yes. of the house. Yes. When you are in the midst of a storm, oh, it is too late. Yes. The house is already built. You gotta assess this thing and deal with a storm in mind. Because no matter how deep and strong your faith, listen, one was a hearer and a doer of the word. But guess what? The hearer and doer of the word, the one with great faith, experienced the same storm as the one who was not a hero or a the word. It rains on the just and the unjust. The difference between the two is that the just deal with a storm in mind. The next difference is obvious, is not so obvious but very vital. And that is that the wise built from the bottom up. So many focus on uh, getting uh, the beauty first and then going back and building what they're going to put on. And the text reminds us, my friends, we've got to build, my friends, from the bottom up. Uh, one of the inter thing, interesting things about living in Tulsa, living in Oklahoma, uh, we experienced it not too long ago. We live in Tornado Alley. Tornadoes will come all the time. Uh, and what you'll often find that's unique uh, often to my area uh, is these men and women uh, who are called storm chasers. And them being called storm chasers is really not the correct terminology. Because what they are really attempting to do is not chase a storm, but to get out in front of the storm. And they want to get out in front of the storm so they can let us know yes. where the storm is headed. Yes, because guess what? If you are behind the storm, okay. Okay. you don't have time uh, to warn folk who are out in front of the storm yes. that the storm is coming. In fact, if you are in the middle of the storm, and, 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 and tornadoes are, are actually rain-wrapped storms. If you were in the middle of that storm, you showed up. <laughs> Can't see anything. But the purpose of a storm chaser is to get out in front of the storm to warn us where the storm is going. And I'm glad that we have the ultimate yes. Yes. storm, yes. not chase, but storm more. Yes. He's always out in front of the storm. Yes. Uh, 
In fact, when the disciples and uh, Jesus got in this ship and uh, were going across uh, the Sea of Galilee, uh, Jesus in his earthly body, his humanity was in the ship. But his divinity was out in front of the storm. That's why he could sleep in the stern of the ship because his humanity was on the ship. But his divinity was out in front of the storm. And he was trying to get his disciples to know you got to deal with the storm in your And my brothers and my sisters, uh, the Lord is telling you and I that the captain of the ship is out in front uh, letting us know that if winds will blow, breakers will dash. But if you listen to the architect and build with the storm in mind, when the rains come, the winds blow, your house will be built in such a way that you not only stay, you not only thrive, but you'll have the victory even through your storm. But my friend, my brother, my sister, got to build with the storm in mind. And listen, that building with the storm in mind means that you've got to get the spiritual infrastructure of your life in place. Amen. And that simply means that you've got to have your life built on the foundation yes, of a saving relationship yes, yes. with Jesus Christ. Amen. See, many of us, we come to church and we want to build uh, uh, our spiritual life on the blessings mm -hmm. that come from being in the presence of God. We want prosperity. We want money. We want health. We want wealth. Uh, the, those are the blessings that come from God. But guess what? There are a whole lot of folk who are blessed with everything the world can offer. And when the winds start blowing, they take their life just like everybody else. Because the foundation was not built to withstand the storm. That foundation you need is a saving relationship yes. with Jesus Christ that can only come from honest confession of sin and honest acknowledgement that he is the Savior who can set you free. So as I invite you to stand and as I invite those who are viewing virtually to consider their commitment and their walk with the Lord, your commitment from the standpoint of being eternally secure, that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. This is a moment of contemplation. It is a moment of examination. Have you built your life with a storm in mind? There is one storm that is going to come to all of our life. And that storm is death. Bible says it is appointed unto all of us to die. Are you building with a storm in mind? And when you build with a storm in mind, you are laying up for yourself not treasures on earth, but treasures in heaven. You are laying up for yourself a mansion that is safe and secure. The only residence, the only abode that is stormproof, rainproof, and floodproof because it's built on the life, the death, the burial.
for $142. Our theme is coming from Isaiah 43 and verse 2. So read it, pray over it. Uh, the theme is preserved, protected, and prospered through a pandemic. Preserved, protected, prospered through a pandemic. We're also excited to have Bishop Malcolm W. Kobe as our guest speaker. Uh, he is the jurisdictional prelate. Oklahoma Southeast Jurisdiction of the Church of God in Christ, General Board Member of the Church of God in Christ, and Pastor of Victory Temple Church of God in Christ. Be praying in advance with and for him as he comes to deliver a word. Look forward to being back here next Sunday in person. Certainly want you to view us virtually as well. May God bless you. May God keep you as my prayer. <laughs> Of the Holy Spirit, go with each and every one of you. This is my prayer.